Good evening, everybody. Let's stand together. Let's sing this song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel like praising, praising Him. And I feel like praising, praising Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning. I'm going to praise Him all day long. And I feel like praising, praising Him. All oh, just sing together. Hallelujah. I feel like praising, praising Him. Oh, praise God. And I feel like praising, praising Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning. I'm going to praise Him all day long. And I feel like praising, praising Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I feel like praising, praising Him. And I feel like praising, praising Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning. I'm going to praise Him all day long. And I feel like praising, praising Him. Oh, yes, Lord. And I feel like praising, praising Him. And I feel like praising, praising Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning. I'm going to praise Him all day long. And I feel like praising Him. Just put your hands together, amen. Play it now. service and I'm glad we have an evening worship service amen a lot of churches don't have it anymore but it's just good to come together and uh, however many we have just gonna praise God worship the Lord magnify him amen praise God let's pray together Heavenly Father we love you we praise you and we worship you Lord thank you God for this opportunity we have there doors open tonight Lord that gathered to worship you to exalt you to magnify you God thank you Lord just making more time for you more room for you Lord in our hearts and lives as this consecrated time tonight, God, we give you all the glory. We invite the Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. Touch our hearts and lives. Lord, let our praise, Lord, let our praise reach your ears tonight, Lord. The, the fruit of our lips giving you praise. Thank you, Father. We love and praise you. Touch the body of Christ. Strengthen and mighty God, we pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll turn and say hi to one another tonight. God bless everybody tonight. Praise the Lord. multitask. He can <laughs> do anything we ask. Praise 
praise the Lord. church. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him glory tonight. Praise the Lord. His very presence in this place. Jesus. Yes, the word. Just wanna be with you. 
Yes, the world. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we Just wanna be with you, Sing King of Glory, King of Glory. Fill this place. We just wanna be with you. We just wanna be with you.
thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name tonight. Glorify the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
to the Lord tonight and just praise him just praise him with your voice with your lips just cry out to God say Lord I love you I praise you I'm here and I worship you hallelujah holy is the Lord and we exalt your holy name and we magnify you in this house tonight glory to God hallelujah thank God that we are set free saved by the blood of the lamb saved and delivered by the power of Jesus Christ child of the king praise God and we worship him and we honor him in this place and we give God the glory hallelujah praise the Lord praise God thank you Jesus we love you we praise you we worship you we need you God and we glorify the holy name of the Lord praise God praise God just acknowledge his very presence tonight acknowledge that God is acknowledge who he is Hallelujah, as the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we believe the Lord. We believe the report of the Lord as we stand upon the word, the promises of God that are yes and amen. Are you glad to be saved? Are you glad to be part of the family of God? Amen. Give him praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. You may be seated tonight, church, and God bless you. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen. He is good. Boy, we had a good service today, didn't we? I mean to tell you the power of the Lord was present here, and you never know what's going to happen. We never know. <clears throat> we just come believing, and I tell you, the river was flowing today, and uh, just give all God all the glory, but I tell you, I love it when he shows up, amen, and and uh, we had some uh, visitors with us today, and it was really, really good to have them. And, uh, you know, sometimes the Lord will do that just to try to reach, reach them. You know that? Just trying to reach them. And, and uh, but not only bless us, but reach others also. Amen. And uh, I am thankful. I, I think about this, but I'm thankful that God brought me out of a dead, stale religion into a living relationship with Jesus. And what a difference, what a difference it really makes. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I am also thankful. I know this. We just want to be thankful for some things here. I'm thankful it's raining today. We needed this very dry in Ohio, so I just thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for watering the trees and the and the, uh, and the grass and the flowers. We needed this, and so praise God. It's not one of these crazy floods. Just a nice rain today to help out a little bit. Okay. Praise God. Amen. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, good day today. Wonderful time today, and just a great time. Just to thank the Lord. Um, uh, just a couple things. Let me just uh, share with you. First of all, I just want to say this. Oscar mentioned to me uh, tonight that this morning he had his three grandchildren that were baptized today. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. So praise. Amen. I love that. Amen. I, I love it when uh, I, I just see, you know, children being reached with the gospel of Christ. Amen. And I, I thank the Lord. I and uh, just praise God for that. And I, children today, we need to reach him because I know the, the devil's trying to 
uh, reach them. The devil's trying to destroy their heart and their soul, but we want to reach them with the wonderful gospel of Christ, okay? Praise God. Let me just mention a few things today. I tell you what, uh, I got to overhear just a little bit of foundations class, and I, that's, I think it's Sister Rorty, I think she got to preaching in there, but I tell you, it was good. I, I felt it. I sense. I felt the presence of the Lord. I thought that was great, and I'm really glad. I listened to me. I'm very proud of you for being a part of the foundations class and sticking with it. Very, very important, and uh, it takes time to build that foundation, so you just continue. Go through those scriptures and what forth, and uh, uh, and you'll get those, and they're, they're foundational in your in your walk with God, in your doctrines. Very important that we have a right foundation, okay? Praise the Lord. You want to build a building on a faulty foundation. No, you want to build on a strong foundation, not on the sand that sinks, but on a, some foundation that won't be moved, okay? And, uh, of course, we know that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Real quick tonight, uh, we have women's Bible study tomorrow night at 630. You ladies, please come and be a part. Love to have you there learning and growing in Christ, the Word of God together. And uh, just uh, being able to con uh, talk and dialogue and talk about the Word of God and uh, and uh, get your input. They're just very good men. We have ours on this Thursday also, so don't forget. Uh, bring your uh, uh, favorite foods or snacks, whatever, your Bible, your workbook. Let's get into the Word of God, okay? And then also peanut butter and Jesus uh, coming up this Saturday. And uh, I have a note here that says that we need chips for that. I think we have everything else covered, right? So if anybody would like to volunteer to bring chips... Uh, let Sister Jan know, and because if, if she doesn't have anybody in the next few days, and then, then uh, we'll, we'll take care of that, okay? So just want to make sure, uh, but please uh, let her know if you want to do that, okay? And then, of course, be praying. Let's be praying for our VBS right around the corner, not this coming week, but the next week. So let's really be praying. Let's really seek the Lord for this, and, uh, and I know it's going to be a, it's a lot of work, uh, but it's a lot of fun. But I, I love it uh, when we have the opportunity to reach these kids. So we really need to get the word out. We're going to be posting this. And some of i got to post this. I keep forgetting. But I gotta, I'm going to post this on Facebook, on our church Facebook page. And please, would you do me a favor and share that on your page, okay? We can reach potentially thousands of people in this local area if we'll just do that, okay? Uh, that would be very, very helpful. Appreciate that so very much. Also, just remember, we have these cards as well. Uh, we would like to get these kids plugged into Sunday school. I know they come on Wednesday night. They're used to that. These kids usually aren't church kids. The parents don't get up uh, on Sunday morning very early. Uh, in this area, it's like around noon. People start moving around. But if we can get them to come to Sunday school, that would be fantastic. These cards on the back table as well. There are sign-up sheets in the back table for VBS, also on the foyer for peanut butter and Jesus. Sound good? Sound real good? All right. So help us out there. Praise the Lord. Matthew and Mary, y'all have a good anniversary today. All good? All good. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise good. I say, yeah, we're all good. Okay. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> walk, walk for life uh, with a voice of hope. If you're interested, would like to help, you can get on their website. There it is right there, voiceofhopepc.org. And you can go click under events, and it'll have the Walk for Life. And you can donate. If you want to walk for life or if you want to support somebody that walks for life, please do so. Or if you just want to donate, that's fantastic. You want to go through them. That's okay. You want to go through us, we'll send them a check, whatever it might be. But I, it's a great, listen, we need to support that, that, that ministry and that work. Very, very important. That's one of my passions right there. And uh, very, very, very important. Okay? Let's pray about that. And uh, however the Lord uh, would lead and uh, guide you there. Okay? All right. <clears throat> also, uh, before, before we receive any kind of special offering for the building fund, I'm very thankful. God is, God is providing for this. Very, very thankful about this. And uh, um, but I, and I give God the glory and the praise. Amen. Um, I wanted to just say something I, I had mentioned yesterday. I, I put this on Facebook because it's something that really, really is bothering me today. And, uh, of course, you, you probably have seen it, probably the post about what I talked about as a pastor's standpoint of alcoholism. And it's hard to reach people that, um, that are not saved uh, when uh, they have alcohol problems or not, regardless. But if they're seeing other Christians that are doing worldly things, one of the things, alcoholism, drinking alcohol, social drinking, they call it, um, that makes it tough because the excuse is, well, they can do it, you know. So in other words, what's happening is the church wants to be saved, go to heaven, have the assurance of going to heaven, but have all the, the, the sinful flavors of, of the world, okay. And um, I didn't want to argue. I said, this is not a debate. This is, this is just what I'm putting out there. This is not a debate. But, you know, isn't a sh and it ended up being quite a debate, and there's a lot, a lot on there. And I didn't want it to be attacking anybody, anything like this. But let me just say this. That just tells you where we're at today. That tells you where we're at. This should not be an issue in the church. This should not be an issue, okay? But here we are in 2023, and it is an issue. It is something we have to deal with. I will be dealing with this subject. I will put a message together, and I will deal with this subject. Um, but... Um, 
I, again, we're not, I'm not attacking any person, okay? And I know there are a few pastors got on there, and they began to kind of attack me in some ways. It's, it's okay. Listen, that doesn't bother me, okay? It doesn't matter, okay? Um, they're not going to change my view on this because I know I'm right, and they're wrong, and I know that, okay? And I'm not being, I'm not, listen, I'm not being prideful about that. I just know what the scriptures say. I know they debate the fact that I don't know what the scriptures say, but I do know what the scriptures say. Plus, believe me, the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost does make a difference on the inside on these things, okay, on these issues. Now, this book is out of print. It's by David Wilkerson called Sippin' Saints. It is out of print. This thing will is just powerful, cover everything. I mean, this thing, Brother Wilkerson had to deal with this years ago in New York. Isn't that something? He dealt with this years ago. But here we are today. So this is fantastic. Uh, if you find it, uh, you might find it on Amazon. Uh, you might find it on used bookstores. Uh, hard to find, but I tell you what, it's worth the read. Fantastic. When you get finished with this book, you will know without a doubt that drinking alcohol as a Christian is wrong, okay, and it leads to sin, okay? It'll lead you the wrong direction. It doesn't lead you to the cross. It doesn't lead you to Christ. It leads you to sin. It opens a door for Satan. The Bible tells us not to do that. Now, listen, I, I know people, well, they say, well, you could drink, but don't get drunk. Well, being that I don't drink, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. One glass of wine, I would be drunk, Okay, I don't drink. Okay, so the fact is, I am not going to open myself up to that. I will not do it. And uh, and this is what I found with people that have alcoholism and problems is that they always start off with small social drinking. I heard Dick Van Dyke tell the story about this, just social drinking. And before long, he was an alcoholic. His body craved it more and more and more to where he was drinking alcohol in the morning, afternoon, and evening, all day long, every day, drinking alcohol. Okay, had to have it. Okay, and. Uh, it's, it's, it, it destroys families, it de destroys homes, um, it, it causes all kinds of problems. Now, Matthew here with the police force says that alcoholism is a worse problem than even with drugs, right? Is that right? It's, uh, it, what did you say, son, about that? You said... It's a bigger daily issue that they deal with. It's a bigger daily issue that they deal with, okay? So it's not, it's, listen, this, and I believe this is the, the see, the Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 18, be not drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. There's a comparison there. Now, the fact is that the devil has alcohol. God has the Holy Ghost. And I want the Holy Ghost. I don't want what the world has. I don't want what the devil has, okay? I want what God has. And I want to be filled with the new wine, which is the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. So if we would quit trying to make excuses of why we can drink alcohol and start spending more time at the altar, seeking the face of God and getting filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you won't want what the devil has. You won't want what the world has, right? Amen? Praise God. All right, I'm, I'm trying to save this for when I do preach on this. But the fact is, you don't want it. I am not attacking any one person. I, I'm attacking, I'm attacking the, the, the doctrine of this, okay, that it is not right, it is not good, it is wrong, and um, your pastor knows it's wrong. Your pastor uh, will uh, preach the truth on this and will not twist and, and contort the scriptures to make it try to uh, say something else than what it really says, okay? Now, John chapter 2, Jesus did not turn. He turned water to wine, but it was not fermented. How do you know that? Because the Bible in the Old Testament tells us that, that as far as fermented wine and alcohol, don't even look upon it, okay? And Proverbs 20 and 1 tells it that wine is a mockery, okay? And it says uh, wine is a mockery, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and alcohol or, or strong drink is a brawler, okay? And uh, whoever is led away by it is not wise, Okay, the Bible tells us that. So why would Jesus do something contrary to the scriptures? Why would he give people fermented wine with that possibility of becoming impaired and possibility of becoming drunk when the scriptures tells you not to do so? Now, understand that Jesus is the word. Okay, and he's not going to do something contrary. So there are different strengths of wine. There were different levels of wine in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. But the Bible just uses the word wine. Okay, understand. There's a lot to be said about that. Um, that's just kind of a, a summary there. But I wasn't trying to cause any problems. But I'm finding out today that if you are going to stand for what you feel is right, biblically, your, your biblical co convictions and what the Word of God says, then it's going to cause a problem. Okay? It's going to cause a problem. So be it. That, I know I realize that. 
But the closer you get to the cross, the fewer friends you will have. Okay, I want you to know that. The closer you get to the cross, the fewer friends you will have. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm concerned because you have new believers coming into the faith and they come into churches now. And I, this is becoming an issue. This is, this is everywhere now. So now they bring them into the church and they say, it's, hey, you can, it's okay, you can go drink with us just as long as you don't get drunk. Well, you're opening the door to them and you're giving them a false gospel and a false Jesus. It's a, it's a false representation of the true God. So it really, so where's the separation? Where's the sanctification? Where's the come out from among them? Be separate or be holy, says the Lord. Where is the part that says, um, uh, don't touch the unclean thing? Uh, and the part that says uh, to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Now listen, folks. A few, I saw, I saw on, on Facebook, um, someone I know, okay, not, not from this church, not even a Mary, but somebody I know, very, very dear, and a Christian, okay, but, but had a picture taken of him with, with, a, with a, uh, a glass of beer right in front of him and a glass of wine, and that really disturbed me, that bothered me, and it grieved me, I'm going to tell you, it grieved me. And I am saying that just in that right there gives you a false, false representation of a Christian, okay? It doesn't mean this. I'm listen, I, 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 uh, well, I know we, this can go on for some time, but the fact is, it really is an issue. We need to pray about this. Be a witness. I'm not, listen, you, you're not going to debate and argue with a person and change their mind. You're not. It has to be something God reveals to them. But you can be a witness by not doing it. You can be a witness and, and not be haughty and not be re this religious pharisaical attitude or condemning, okay? But if someone offers you this, you say, no, thank you. I'm a, I'm a born-again Christian. Oh, we're Christians too, but we drink. No, no, no. No, the Lord told me, no, it's not, it's not right for me, okay? So whatever it is between you and God, I know that my God, my Lord, my Jesus says it's not okay. The Holy Ghost won't let me. There's convictions that I have that I live by. And so there are certain ways. And believe me, you say, well, that might offend somebody. It might, but also you, you, it also can deal with their heart and cause them to start thinking and, and, and searching out the scriptures, you know, because this is what's going on today. This is what's happening. Christians, listen. They don't want to think anymore. They just want the pastor to tell them what to do. That's not this kind of church, okay? They want, they want the pastor to tell them everything. Oh, can, can, can I do this? 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 Yada, 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 yada. Hold it. Wait a minute. God's given you a wonderful brain you can use to think with, and God's given you the inner witness of the Holy Ghost, okay? He will lead and guide you. The steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord. God will guide you. But let me just say this, that they want the pastor to tell them it's okay to do this. It's okay to drink. It's okay to have social drinking. No, it's not. So you got pastors today telling their congregation it's okay. You got pastors that are cussing, pastors that are using terrible, filthy language. It's okay, they say, to do that once in a while. It's okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's like me coming up and telling you, oh, it's okay to sin every once in a while. It's okay to sin. I don't say that. I know that we're not perfect, and I know we stumble. I know we make mistakes. I realize that, and I don't preach or teach sinless perfection. But I'm not going to come here and tell you it's okay to sin. Okay, I'm not going to do that. But I tell you, I tell you what, I will do this. I will love you, and I will be be faithful unto God and unto this church, the body of Christ, and I will preach the word, and I'll let the Holy Spirit do the convicting and do the dealing with the heart as to what you can and can't do. Okay, and and so that's my job. But we have today a, a really a church age that just says, I don't want to think, I don't want conviction, I run from conviction. I just want the pastor to tell me. And you got pastors that are caving in and telling the people that they can do these things and, they, and it's wrong, okay? Listen, when you got pastors behind the pulpit but they're homosexual, how are they going to preach against sin? How are you going to preach against that? When they're, when they're transgender, how are you going to preach against sin? It's awful. It's terrible. The time we're living in today and the church, not only the world in sad shape, but the church is in sad shape. I, and, and listen, we're not perfect. Your pastor is not perfect. This is not a perfect church. We're not perfect people. But the Bible does say that we're to strive for perfection. We are to strive for it, okay? And um, so what, what's, what's the will of God? The will of God is that, that we be obedient to God, to his word, okay? And, uh, and, that's, and by, by God's help and by God's grace, that's what we want to do.
So, um, wow. Let's stand together tonight, okay? Praise God. God bless you. A lot going on. A lot going on. And, uh, but uh, this is something that uh, we need to be prayerful about. You know that? Prayerful about things like this. And, uh, and really keep this before the Lord. You have an opportunity to witness, and, and uh, I as well. And uh, so um, praise God, church. Amen. But thank you so much for your help and your generosity. We're just going to we're gonna uh, take a, a, just an offering again for the building fund. That's fantastic if you can. That would be great. And uh, can I have my, my singers up here? Amen. We've got Jeffrey singing tonight. His, his, uh, his uh, guitar went kaput right, at, right when service started. So I don't know what's wrong with it, but he's got to fix something in there, okay? Hallelujah. Let's, let's pray together. Praise God. Um, Father, I just thank you, God, for this opportunity as we give unto you. Thank you, Lord, for the provision of this building. And uh, we just give you all the honor and the glory. Bless the congregation, Father, whatever offering, whatever extra we can give. Thank you, Father, because it does add up. We just, we just praise your holy name for you are almighty God. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Come, the box is right over here. Let's just sing that song. praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your ways step by step you lead me i will follow you all of my in your ways step by step you lead me and I'll follow you all of my days amen <laughs> praise God thank you church you may be seated praise the Lord uh, just real quick uh, for 1295 you can have this book right here called Maddie on a mission to Thailand be a light uh, if you if you uh, want this see Morgan and uh, she has some books. I tell you what, they're highly quali high quality, very nicely done. It'll be a blessing. Buy it for your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And uh, we're going to keep some on hand here at the church. And we have kids come here uh, that we can maybe give these away as gifts as well. Okay? Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Um, glory to God. The way things were going this week, I was just trying to get through Sunday morning. I had asked Sister Jan if she would... Uh, do me a huge favor and do devotional messages for us here on Sunday night. But I do feel better, praise God. And I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. And I felt a little bit better yesterday than I did Friday. And uh, But uh, praise the Lord, uh, hallelujah. Has anybody ever had kidney stone issues before in the church? Oh, God bless you, my Lord. God bless you. That's tough, isn't it? That is hard. Um, well, let's pray we don't have any more issues like that, amen, by God's grace. Ah, all right, I'm throwing things around up here. Sister Jan, come on. God bless you. Thank you for helping out tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. What's that thing in your arm? Um, it's fine. Okay. It's okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> all right. So for some reason, I just started shaking. I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's okay. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. <laughs> it's just nerves. I don't know why that happens, but sometimes it does. But anyway... Um, I'm very excited, actually, because um, in preparation for Vacation Bible School, which is titled Crave Cafe, I've been um, listening to music, and I've been just reading scriptures, and I thought, Lord, this message that's going to come to the children through Vacation Bible School is really necessary for the church. <laughs> it's really for the church. And so it's going to be a blessing for the children, but it's also going to be a blessing for the body of Christ. And so I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and share some of that tonight. So um, 
Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into this. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to be here with us in a mighty way. I ask that you would touch and help me, God, and I pray that your word would just go forth and would minister to every heart, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would give us an appetite for the things of you, Lord Jesus. Um, I just believe you, God, that you want to move mightily. I thank you for this morning, Lord. I just ask you to continue to be with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so <laughs> um, I was looking at and thinking about um, the words weak and hungry. Okay, so weak and hungry. So if you take the first three letters of the word weak, W-E-A, and you take the last two letters of hungry, you get the word weary. So if we're weak and we're hungry and we don't do anything about it, then we become weary. And today, pastor was preaching, and he was saying some people are weary. And then Brother Tom testified, and he said, I'm just weary, pastor. And I thought, Lord, you're so good. And then in a little bit, you'll hear some places where I was like, shh, you're taking my whole devotion, pastor. <laughs> so for me, that just confirms that what what God laid on my heart to share with you is what he wants to share with you. And so I want to start by reading Matthew 5, 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says, now this is from my King James, and it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yeah. And so with that, um, I'm going to read a couple notes from my Bible. The first one is just on the word blessed. And it says that it indicates a fullness of blessing that sustains a disciple of Jesus even in difficult circumstances or persecution. It includes a sense of spiritual well-being because of one's relationship to Jesus that includes his love, care, salvation, and daily presence. So that's just the note on blessed. And then it, the note on the scripture, Matthew 5, 6, says, this is one of the most important verses in the Sermon on the Mount. The foundational requirement for all godly living is to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Such hunger is seen in Moses, the psalmist, the apostle Paul. The spiritual condition of Christians throughout their lives will depend on their hunger and yes. thirst yes. for yes. the presence of God, yes. the word of God, yes. the communion of Christ, the fellowship of the spirit, Amen. righteousness, yes. kingdom power, and the return of the Lord. Yes. So hungering yes. after those things. Yes. The Christian's hunger for the things of God is destroyed by worldly anxiety, deceitfulness of wealth, desire for things and life's pleasures, and failure to abide in Christ. When the hunger of believers for God and his righteousness is destroyed, they will die spiritually. For this reason, it is essential that we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's convicting work in our lives. So it says we're to be hungry, we're to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And it says when we're doing that, we're blessed. And that blessing means that the Lord will sustain us no matter what. Whatever circumstance, condition you find yourself in. But then... In the English Standard Version, Matthew 5, 6 reads like this. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. I love that word, satisfied, content, satisfied. And um, Abby has made a playlist for Vacation Bible School. So it has songs that go along with the Vacation Bible School theme, and one of the songs that's on there that I've heard and we've sung here before, but it's been a while, 
The song is called Hungry. And so I've been listening to that when I'm walking. And it says, Hungry, I come to you, for I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So it says, Hungry, I come to you, because you're going to satisfy. But when it says, Your love does not run dry, for me, that triggers thirsty. So you're hungry and you're thirsty, and you're coming to Jesus. And then it says, so I wait for you. So I wait for you. In that waiting, that to me speaks of dependence. It speaks of perseverance, dedication, just because you're waiting. And then it says, I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Surrender. To me, that speaks of surrender. Broken, I run to you. So no matter what condition I find myself in, I know you're the answer. So I'm going to run to you. And then it says, for your arms are open wide. I run to you because you're standing there waiting to receive me. I am weary. I'm weak. I'm hungry. But I'm going to come to you, Jesus. I am weary, but I know your touch restores my life. And then it goes back to, so I wait for you. So I wait for you. Sometimes that's what we have to do. But I have a question for you. (laughs) What if being satisfied or filled, whichever one you want to take at the moment, King James Version or ESV. So what if being satisfied or being filled Although it's not always easy to do, but what if it was just as simple as showing up? How about show up to your quiet time? Show up to your Bible reading? Show up to the church services? Show up to Sunday school? Show up to Bible study? The list can go on and on and on. You can show up by listening when the Holy Spirit calls you to a deeper walk. <laughs> if you are weary, your strength, your faith, your joy, your peace, all of these things can be restored by continually showing up. Pastor Mark said today, he said, keep on, keep on, keep on. And I thought, why does he keep saying it? And I'm writing this message and I'm like, keep on over and over and over again. Keep on showing up. Just keep on. Sometimes we miss out because we missed. We missed quiet time. We missed the worship service. We missed the prayer meeting. We missed Sunday school class. Or maybe we missed the Bible study. We have got to learn to feast on, to hunger and to thirst for what God has prepared for us. Um, Is anyone else glad or satisfied that they did not miss this morning? (laughs) I was like, "Woo! praise God. God showed up. I felt renewed, strengthened, and encouraged. And that was during the worship. (laughs) That was before the preaching of the word. It was like lightning just hit me and it was like lord wow singing about the blood and i thought the lord just spoke to my heart and said the blood that saved you and washed you clean is the same blood that's going to save those boys and so i was super encouraged and i know other people were too because there was a lot of praise going on (laughs) there were a lot of people being touched and filled and satisfied this morning And so, yes, do you ever struggle? Because sometimes we think about showing up for church. We think about showing up for our quiet time. But do you ever struggle just to show up? Maybe it's um, you're struggling with needing help, extra help, just to keep on. It can be a struggle to keep showing up at work. Maybe it isn't about church. Maybe it's work to keep showing up in relationships that wear you down. Have you ever wondered, is it really worth it? 
Have you ever just had those times when you thought, Lord, <laughs> is it even worth it? There have been times when I felt so down and so distraught. Maybe, you know, everything's coming against me. And I thought, I'm driving in my car. And I literally had the thought come into my mind. What's to keep me from just driving on? Just keep driving, Jan. Just keep driving. Don't go back. Just go on. I've had that happen. You can't keep those thoughts in your mind. You can't continue to entertain them. You have got to stop it and say, no, what keeps me is God. <laughs> it's the call of God. Yeah. But I've actually doubted being in God's will <laughs> because things can seem so messy. Yeah. When your ministry is to children, but your own children yeah. aren't serving the Lord, if you let him, the enemy will use that against you <laughs> in a big way. But you just can't let that happen. But it seems so messy. Right. But I know that if God has called me to something, he's going to help me through it. Oh, yeah. And I show up because Jesus expects me to. <laughs> God didn't promise an easy life. In Psalm 34, 19, it says, a righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. It doesn't say may have some trouble. It says may have many troubles, <laughs> many. So I will share with you, reach out to the Lord and let him fill you. Let him satisfy you, strengthen you to keep on showing up. <laughs> now, we'll make mistakes. <laughs> we'll stumble. We'll be tempted to sin. But as followers of Jesus... We must be determined to remain faithful. Keep showing up when others let you down. Sometimes we think that, I think, that my expectations of someone are too high. But it may be that they don't have high enough expectations of themselves. So what we can do is give them grace and let God deal with them. Keep showing up when you're treated unfairly. Or unkindly when you face loss when you feel sad just keep showing up because if you'll keep showing up God's grace will show up <laughs> and God's he will fill and satisfy you just like the scripture says don't give up don't give in don't quit keep on and I would say to you that Jesus showed up for you on the cross. And he keeps showing up when we are hungry and thirsty for him and for his ways. The enemy will constantly try to get us to fill or satisfy ourselves with worldly stuff so that we will grow weary. But God says to hunger and thirst after righteousness and Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, Come unto me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And that harvest for us is eternal life. But in that not giving up, there will, we will bear fruit, and that will bless others. So our, our harvest is going to be other souls as well. <laughs> um, weary is also translated as get tired or lose heart. So Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary or get tired or lose heart in doing good. Okay. Yeah. When we show up, God will show up. Yeah. If we show up hungry and thirsty for God and his righteousness, yeah. basically being hungry and thirsty for righteousness to me means being mindful of God, yeah. considering him in everything, wanting to be in his presence, caring about what he cares about. Yeah. We're to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Wow. I am satisfied, filled, content, made happy by his spirit 
when I make the effort to show up, wanting or desiring his will and his ways and wanting his kingdom to come. So God wants us to want him, to hunger and thirst for him, to crave, there's that word, to crave his righteousness. Sometimes maybe we aren't feeling it. Have you ever been there where you're like, I'm just not feeling it today? But we know it's right. We know it's the right thing. And you know what? We can tell him that. We can say, Lord, I'm not feeling it today. I know it's what I'm supposed to do. I know I'm supposed to be hungering and thirsting after you. Help me. (laughs) And you can ask him to help you. I know that God can work miracles, and he can give me, and he can give you the desire and the hunger and the thirst for him. So if you find yourself not being hungry, not being thirsty for the Lord, for his righteousness, ask him to do that in you. He will. He will do that. Maybe in these dry times, right? Maybe you're going through a valley. Maybe you're going through a dry time. Maybe you feel like you're in the wilderness. Maybe there's nothing extraordinary or super spiritual going on. Maybe it's only the daily grind. But isn't that where we often find Jesus? Among the mundane, sometimes monotonous, everyday stuff. Sometimes we're pulling weeds and God speaks to us. Sometimes we're doing dishes. Sometimes we're driving in our car. Maybe we're just listening to music and God shows up. (laughs) Ask God to give you a hunger and a thirst for him and he will satisfy you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Happy. (laughs) So I have asked Abby. She's going to play a song for us. And so I am just going to pray again before um, I step down from here. Dear Jesus, I just ask you to help each one here to hunger and thirst for you, Lord Jesus. I pray that we would have that thirst like the Bible says, the deer pants for the water brook, Lord. Might our souls long for you, Jesus. I just pray that you would move by your spirit. And as we just worship you with this song, God, that you would make this a reality in each of our lives, God. We can't reach others if we're not filled, if we're not satisfied with you, Jesus. So God, before we have this Vacation Bible School and we attempt to minister to these children about being hungry and having an appetite for God, make it so in our lives, Jesus. Spirit of God, have your way. Move in this place, God. Let every heart be open to you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. you to come up here to the altar. Let's stand up here together. To get, let's worship the Lord. Come up out of your seat, folks. Let's just come worship God together tonight as she sings this. So I wait for you. So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, your all this heart is living for. Just ask God to fill you with his presence tonight as we worship him. Praise the Lord.
tonight. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Seek his face. Wait in his presence. Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall man up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They should walk and not faint. Praise God. Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wait upon him. Praise the Lord. Just worship the Lord tonight. Feast on the Lord tonight. Seek his face tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But to seek and to thirst and to hunger after righteousness is to hunger and thirst after Christ. Hallelujah. It's to hunger and thirst after him. Praise God. But also, it also means it's the hunger and thirst after right living that's according to him. To live a life of righteousness, to live right, a right life, right living according to God's word, according to his will. Those people are blessed. Hallelujah. And people that wait upon the Lord are people that worship, people that take time and just worship the Lord and praise him are also blessed amen and many times we are weary because we don't take the time to do this one thing to wait in his presence and I want us tonight just to take a few moments longer here and let's wait in his presence and we're going to be like Mary let's be a Mary tonight and let's sit at the feet of Jesus sit at the feet of Jesus just worship him and say Lord I want more of you I want more of you hallelujah Sometimes on Sunday nights I feel a resistance because we're tired. I understand that. Been a long day. Been a good day. But I tell you what. <clears throat> take the time now. Take the time now because we have the opportunity. Amen. Glory to God. To my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy hand, anointed one. Jesus. the Lord. We love you, Lord. We exalt you tonight. We magnify you, Lord. Lord, we seek your face. Hallelujah. Lord, we press in to your presence.
Praise God. Praise the Lord. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Let's worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Let me hunger for you. May we have a greater craving for God, for his presence, and our relationship with the Lord, that we would desire him more than anything else. God put that in us. Sister Dan even said it tonight, that uh, if you're not hungry like you need to be or thirsty like you should be, then ask God to put that in your heart. Ask God to put that. God has provided for you. God has blessed you, he says. And he desires for you to hunger for him as much as he hungers for you and that relationship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify your name tonight. We love you. So let's draw near unto God tonight, and he will draw near unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I wait. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah.
thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We worship you. Magnify the Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost just by seeking His face. That there's a cry in your heart that says, I want God. I, and you're not in reserve. You're not holding back. You say, I want the Lord. And you're crying out to the Lord. I'm telling you, He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. He'll renew you, refill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Lord will do that. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. exalt him. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I exalt thee. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know how precious this time is? Do you realize this? This is very, very precious for you will understand that a lot of churches no longer have this, where they just come and wait on the Lord.
Just come and worship. Come spend time in the presence of God. And, and really, this all has to do with our value of God as to whether we think it's worth the time or the effort. Yes, it is. It is worth the time and the effort. And the reason why many people are weary and tired and worn out and at a spiritual low is because they don't do this. Spend time with Jesus. We'll spend time on other things that occupy us, but not just time, pure, unadulterated, sincere time with God, just worshiping Him. And that's okay to do that. It's okay to sit in your car and just wait upon the Lord. If you just need to get alone, just sit in your car. Or, or go walk around the cemetery. Uh, do that just to pray. Uh, just get alone with Jesus and talk to Him or wait upon Him. Praise God. God, I, the church needs that hunger again. Oh, God, I pray for that. Not just word of life, but I'm talking about the church all over. Just give us that hunger. The hunger to where they used to have services almost every night, tent revivals that would last six weeks or longer. Just hungry for the Lord. Hungry for God. Services that would last almost up until midnight. Just as the glory would fall, the presence of the Lord. Uh, the Shekinah glory of the Lord would come and people would just worship, spend time at the altar praying, seeking the Lord. And oh my goodness, they were connected. They had God, God had them. And uh, they were hungry and thirsty for Him, for righteousness, for the Lord. Praise God. And uh, don't let other things occupy your thoughts, your time. And uh, don't, don't let yourself be filled up with this world because uh, it can cause us to not be hungry for God. Um, growing up as a, as a child, I remember that uh, I would get out of school, I would be so hungry, and uh, I could have a little snack after I got off of school, but uh, when mama was cooking dinner, uh, you know, I would want to go in the kitchen and, and steal a little bit of something. I was hungry, and my mama said, no. She said, because it'll spoil your appetite. And she wanted me to be able to eat my dinner. And so I think about that sometimes. And uh, many times we're feasting off other things that are spoiling our appetite for more of Jesus. Uh, I don't want those things. I, I want an appetite for God. I'm, I'm thirsty for God. And uh, praise the Lord. May God put that in us. And so, yes, as we uh, are preparing for the... The Crave Cafe, VBS, but really it, it, what Sister Jan said tonight is that how can we expect these young children to be hungry and thirsty after Jesus if they don't see us hungry and thirsty after Jesus ourselves, amen? So let us be hungry for God, hungry for the Lord. Put it in us, Lord. Put it in us, Lord Jesus, amen? And uh, by being faithful to the house of God, like, like I, think about, I think about some things because I know that the Lord moved today, and yet I know some people missed out on that. It saddens my heart. They missed out on that. Um, I'm not talking about those that are out of town, but those that are, are here, that could be here. Um, they missed out. They missed out. And I saw today where Tyra and Trevor on vacation, they had their, their phone or their Facebook or iPad with their Bible, and they, were, they took the time. To, to be involved in a part of the service. These young people, isn't that amazing? And that just blessed my heart. Why? Because they're hungry. They're hungry. So you know what? We're, my, we're not missing church. We might be out of town, but we're not missing. And man, that, that blessed me. Praise God. I love that. I love that. That appetite. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's so good, church. He's so good. Praise the Lord. I'll sing that, Abby. That's one of my favorite. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glorify you, God. Hallelujah.
I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Jesus, glory to God. I never want to leave. You want revival, church? Amen. You want revival? My Lord, hallelujah. Jesus. How many want him? I just yes, want you. Jesus, hallelujah. Nothing else. Oh, Lord. Nothing, nothing else, else Jesus. Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just, just want you. you. Nothing, nothing else. else. Nothing, nothing else, else Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'm caught up in your presence. Oh, Lord. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy thirsting after righteousness, I believe that 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 part of the church is getting smaller or lesser across the globe. 
I thank the Lord that there are some areas where the church is growing. North Korea, and I know that even Afghanistan, a little gospel's getting out. And so, but I, I'm concerned for America. We wonder about all of our problems, our political problems, all the corruption, all the lies, the cover-ups, the evilness, the wickedness, the innocent being uh, judged guilty when they're not, and things like this. It, it just comes back to this right here. It really comes back to the church. And uh, the less light there is, then the greater darkness you will have. But the more light, the lesser darkness. And so there, there is an, an issue here of um, the church itself. And I just pray that, that God would re renew and recultivate a hunger in us and uh, greater desire for Him and your personal walk with Him and your personal life. But... Um, but even when we come together in, in the house of the Lord in worship, that, oh, God, that we will cry out to you, that we will hunger for you, that there be some kind of evidence, something, some kind of sign that there is a spark of something in you that says, I want God. I want the Lord. I want Jesus. And I, I pray for that. I pray for that. And uh, that that would not diminish or die out. But just a greater hunger. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The other day, I, I, uh, in the morning, I got in my car and, and uh, I, I went to start it. And it just, without warning, it just went click. That's it. Click. No power. No sign or evidence that there was anything in there that was going to try to start it just nothing there and that's a dangerous place to be for a Christian we don't want to get to that place where we come to the house of God and we just go click and we we have no effort to worship no effort to draw closer no effort to to seek his face very 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 dangerous place and it can happen. We talked about this one Sunday night about the danger of drifting away. We don't want to drift away from God. But we want a greater hunger and a desire for the Lord. And so, um, and so what I did is I, I have a, a, a battery pack. And so I went and got that. And I hooked up the battery and, and uh, it, it started up. And I, I think about that. Sometimes we just need a little jolt. Amen. <laughs> Whether it be through the preaching, through the singing, through the worship. Uh, maybe a brother or sister uh, coming to you, to your face and encouraging you. Uh, we just need a little bit of a jolt to get us on the right track, to give us a, the, get it back. The cravings, the spiritual hunger, uh, pains and desire for God, we just need a little jolt. And so that's what I love about this. And tonight is just like a little jolt to help us, praise God, to, to come into the presence of the Lord, sit at the feet of Jesus and worship Him, praise God, worship Him and glorify Him. The Lord, Amen. Praise God. And uh, so, I uh, I took the car into the shop, and uh, I told him, I says, this uh, this thing needs a new battery. I said, but um, it's nine years old. Battery lasted nine years, nine years, and uh, all of a sudden went kaplui. And I've seen that in the church. Where, where people are going good and going strong and, and for nine years, man, they're serving God and all of a sudden they just go kaploop and they fizzle out and they drift away and they lost their hunger and they lost their desire and now they're hit and miss with church and they're not listening to the preacher, the pastor, or the people. They're not listening and they're doing their own thing and it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch up with them eventually. And I never want to get to that place in my heart and my life. And I hope that you never will also. So praise God. So they uh, put the battery in and they came with the bill. And they said, you know, that's going to, it's 400 bucks. I said, $400, what are you talking about? They said, that was a special battery. This was made out of fiberglass. It's a special kind of battery. And uh, I said, wow. I said, I remember the days at Walmart. You can buy one for $35. I remember those days. I was 14, 15 years old back at that time. And uh, so, you know, it's a special kind of battery that just keeps on going. And you know what? 
I tell you what, when it comes to God, it comes to the Holy Ghost, uh, I want that special kind of battery, <laughs> that special kind of heart that, uh, that wants and hungers and desires the Lord. Amen. Can you put a price on salvation? And uh, praise God. And I just, I, I want Him. Amen. And hey, praise God. May you be filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit, strengthened in the Lord Jesus. So God bless you. Wonderful service tonight. Wonderful presence of the Lord. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God's good. God's good. Take the time with Jesus. Take the time. He's wonderful. He's a good God. He's a good God. Amen. Y'all are spread out tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Brother Larry, would you pray for us tonight? Is that okay? All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Yes. Oh, Lord. Right. bless you folks. Have a great week. And so remember tomorrow night, ladies, at 6.30. And then uh, Wednesday, our regular service. Praise the Lord. Thursday will be our men's Bible study. My wife and I will be out of town Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going to be out of town Tuesday. So we're going to take one day getaway, okay? God bless you. Praise the Lord, church. Rejoice in Him. Magnify Him. Praise the Lord.